I do have to have a filter. I always have to have a filter. Filter is a good thing. Because then someone shows up and says, are you, are you out of your goddamn mind? push that button. I'm getting faster at that, surprisingly. Pushing buttons, that's a good thing. Pushing thought. buttons and going live on Facebook, you'd think after having, you know, like 30 episodes or so, I'd be adequate, but. I was, I was gonna ask, how many episodes are you on right now? I'm like not 204, sure. 204, 245, 1,000,000.7? Uh, you know, maybe, 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 maybe. All righty. Okay, so we are officially, <laughs> we are live with the adequate Duke Timmer from Artemisia. Uh, pretty phenomenal guy. Recently. Adequate. Adequate. Pretty <laughs> adequate, phenomenal guy. <laughs> he, uh, he's been helping me out quite a bit with a lot of things and training me over the last couple of weeks. I've, I've, I'd say, well, not even weeks, I'd say Please. six months at least, maybe more. Well, no, I guess it's almost been a year now. When, when was that practice? It's been that we a little over there? a year. So, Last yeah. It's, August, um, right? I'd say that, well, actually, I'd actually say that the, um, that we actually started talking that when Vernal had, excuse me, Dragon's March had its, uh, its event out there, and a few of us from the Baron uh, yeah. came out. The Shire and birthday, Shire birthday. The Shire birthday, if I remember correctly, something was up and I couldn't fight that day, but I was watching you fight and we had a good conversation. And mm -hmm. then we talked a little bit more, talked about, you know, you coming out and then you came out uh, and we talked a lot more. You came out to the fighter practice, talked a lot more. And it, I, I wouldn't say that I helped you out as much as, hey, what do you, you asked a lot of really great questions. You're like, hey, what about this? I'm like, okay, let's, let's look at this. And what about that? And And it was more like, more like giving you uh, alternate, not even alternate directions, but like, well, if you're interested in this, try it this way, or if that's what you're doing, try it that way. And you were willing to try, you were willing to, you know, listen to me and not just dismiss me and be like, oh, whatever, you're just like full of smoke and full of yourself, which is yeah. true. Um, <laughs> Fo but, focusing the, the motivation, maybe. Or focusing, focusing the motivation, that, that could, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I think I'll okay. say that one. But a lot of it was more you and willing to listen, willing to take that time to actually try something a little bit different, listen to a little bit of direction. A lot of us, uh, myself included, when it comes down to direction, just gets clinched in like, no, my way is the right way. And then you don't learn. So Great. cool. Great. Perfect. So that's yeah. how we know each other. And mm -hmm. he's going to give any, be giving us his own personal five methods on how he feels to make you a better fighter. So without further ado, we're just gonna turn it over to you and feel free to talk all you want. I'm sure I'll be asking questions along the way. And then at the end, we'll be doing a quick or not so quick question and answer for all the viewers on Facebook and anybody in the Zoom meeting now. So. All right. So uh, five ways to be a better fighter. Um, number one, honestly, it's gonna sound super mundane. Try to do something outside of fighting to keep yourself in shape. Uh, you know, you can be a phenomenal fighter for 30 seconds, but that's not gonna help you through the entirety of the whole list. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the physicality to actually go the distance from the beginning of the, of the tournament or the war or what have you to the very end uh, with that same amount of energy, the same amount of strength, of course, throughout the whole day, you're gonna be losing it. But a lot of my, a lot of the fighters I know on the top ech echelon of fighters, they do something else other than SBA fighting, you know, two, um, two or three times a week. They'll, they'll, um, they'll do CrossFit, they'll do cross country skiing. Some crazy dude owns an alpaca farm. So, you know, they'll do all this other physical stuff to actually keep their bodies engaged. Mm -hmm. By keeping your body engaged, by being able to do not only for the first round or the first few minutes or even the first few passes of a war, but mm -hmm. being able to by the end of the day, when the war is over, when the tournament's over and you're ready to do pickup fights, if you have all that energy, if you've been doing what it takes to actually keep your body tuned up, 
then you're going to be able to continue on. And it doesn't mean you have to hit the gym and be like, you know, oh, the rough guy. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely not that guy. I have a COVID bod going on. COVID baby is going to come out any day now. Yeah. But, um, but uh, yeah, being doing something. Uh, step one, yeah, physicality. I think they called it, what was it, rule number two in the, uh, or rule number three in um, – uh, zombie land so, cardio zombie land cardio cardio, cardio cardio yep yeah yep yeah which rule was it i'm sure someone will correct us <laughs> no, i thought it was a number one rule number one is cardio. It, was, it could be number one i just yeah so yeah it's cardio, up cardio cardio something something physical to keep yourself in shape okay um that's the first step second one know know how how to know know what your body's going to respond um, it's not enough just to be able to go out there and be like, okay, I'm going to throw some pedal shots. Um, so many fighters, and if you watch them fight, they'll start up, I'm going to throw my shots, and then I'm going to block your shots. You know, mm -hmm. start to in, find a way to engage yourself in the fight. Not, and it's not just a matter of throw and receive, throw and receive, throw and receive. It's mm -hmm. a matter of engaging the fight, being able to figure out what direction you go with the fight, figure out where you want to go, how you want the fight to go the speed, the tempo, the range, all that, being able to engage it, being able to control and manipulate the fight as a whole. Um, that is really important. And that's not one singular step, but it's a accumulation of several different steps tied into one. So being okay. able to get that control. So that'd be number two. Um, number three, uh, the third one, know your, know your weapons and your weapon limitations. I know it sounds really basic and simple, but the more you practice you get with your weapons, the, the more proficient you're going to be. And being willing to take the time to get better at them. Um, you know, I've seen people switch weapon styles. Um, and when they switch their weapon styles, the people who are very serious about it, the individuals who want to be like, okay, this is going to be my weapon style. I'm going to dig in on them and learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. They're going to take the time to get their lumps. Okay. And that part so, you know, you know, knowing your weapon styles, being able to swallow your pride, being able to figure out what you can and can't do with it, what's capable, what's not capable, trying to push the boundaries of all you can do yeah. um, with that weapon style. And it very well could be that at the, after six months, and by trying a new weapon style, knowing your weapons, doesn't mean you don't know, pick it up for a couple of practices and put it down. If you're really going to commit to it, at least give yourself a year. Give yourself a year to play around, get beat up, become marginally adequate and then see what's going to do. So yeah, know your weapons, know your tools, like the tools of your trade. Um, three. That was number three. Four. Let me, uh, let me interject right four. there. Hang on one second. Yeah. So is as in part of, as, as a black company, um, you know, us pretty well, um, how would one of our minimum, not, I'm not going to say a standard, but one of our things that we do for our new fighters is as, as a mostly melee unit in the SCA, we don't have necessarily a lot of tournament fighters, just give the people a, back, a little bit of background. We actually have our fighters fight on the shield wall for a, a minimum of one year. Would you, is that something you, could, uh, you would agree on or how would you feel about that? Honestly, fight with work. Whew, okay, so it's wars. Wars are so much fun. I absolutely love wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're brand new and fighting, it, it sucks when you get killed right off the bat by an archer. I like archery. I have one in combat archer, you know. Yeah, but I know. It sucks when you, or, or when you're like, you know, five feet down and all of a sudden you're just kind of standing with your spear and you get zapped. Yep. If you're a brand new fighter, a sword and shield, whether it's a center held, a heat or whatnot, sword and shield is going to be one of the ones, one of the fighting styles that's going to, it's a basic fighting style. Actually, they're all a bit basic, so to speak. But the sword and shield, it's a way to actually start off with a fairly decent defense and learning mm -hmm. fairly decent offense that'll mm -hmm. help you move forward. So would I say, yeah, definitely do it. If that's your gig, then there's no reason why you shouldn't. Um, another thing too, is it gives you that, that year or so, like you said, you do with your company, that year or so them trying to learn um, how to walk in the line, how to gauge the fight. It's a lot easier to do it, I would think, with Sword and Shield being able to be like, okay, what's happening? And having your buddy right next to you and the commander in the back of the spear in the back helping guide you. Mm -hmm. So it definitely helps you out a lot more getting a sense of the timing of the thing of battle. So I would agree with you on that one. If, if, if that's the way your Perfect. company goes, yeah, yeah, roll with it. Yeah. And then after that year is up, we typically uh, let them branch out. 
uh, with different different styles if they want to play it like practice. But then when it comes to the event, we kind of may, we hope or push them more towards staying on the with a shield so they continue to learn and grow that way, but also have the opportunity to try different weapon styles. So mm -hmm. kind of ex kind of relating to what you're saying with your rule number three, know your weapon style and dig into it before you make a commitment to try something else. Um, be the what's what's the saying i'm trying to think of like a jack of all trades is good at is mediocre yeah, at a lot of things but not <laughs> adequate or he's not adequate with one thing yeah. <laughs> i guess i mean you guys <laughs> i think you guys understand what i'm trying to say yeah and uh, like i said especially for newer fighters people just coming in that sword and shield is i i really think one of the bread and butters to get someone started um you can go ahead and start out with some of the other styles Definitely, definitely, some of the paths will be harder, like Bastard Sword. Not Great Sword, Bastard Sword. If you, that's going to be your gig, and that's what you want to start out with, that's going to mm -hmm. hurt. It's not impossible, but it's definitely going to hurt. And if you can yeah. find a great instructor to help you around in your local area, even better. But okay. Sword and Shield is definitely a great way to get started, get, get, a great way to get people energized and focused and be like, hey, look, I, I'm doing a thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, um, number four, repetition. Repetition, continue, continue working on things. You know, you, it's, it's not enough just to know what you're doing. And with repetition, I'm gonna actually throw in teaching. Um, and the reason why I'll throw in teaching with that one is that when you become really good and really proficient at certain things, it's really good to take on the responsibility to help other people out the way you are helped out. Or if you didn't have that help, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of an example of this, where the, the black company is really, really good, but you're willing to go out of your shell, go out of your circle to try to get a little bit more knowledge. And then you, uh, tell me you didn't do this, but I'm pretty confident you did. You brought that knowledge back home and you're like, hey guys, I learned this. I and learned then, a thing. I learned a thing. Let's all teach a thing. And yep. being able to go out there, learn something, pull it back, teach it, go forward, getting that repetition, that pattern going, that is, that is actually, that would be both four and five. Four okay. would be repetition through teaching, five, go out, travel, learn, pull stuff in. Um, one of the, one of my favorite dance instructors, she always, when possible, would edit, a, a, audit a 101 class by another teacher whenever it was possible. Mm -hmm. And I asked her about it one day, I'm like, well, why do you do that? And her answer, stuck to me and stuck to me solid. She's like, you know what? Someone's going to teach me something different. And I'm going to take that different thing. I'm going to take it back. And someday I'm going to find that student that no matter what vocabulary or technique I try to show them, they're not going to be able to learn. But I might get this one nugget from this other instructor, be able to pop it into the, the course, and all of a sudden that might work for them. I'm like, huh. That Absolutely. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. That's that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed with I, a lot of the, the upper echelon fighters and one adequate fighter that keeps you know people keep recommending. But uh, the, you guys all have very similar um, topics or methods to to become a better fighter, but each one of you words it just a little bit different. And I I read a lot of self help books and. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, what, which self-help books work for you? And I'm typically like, I usually give them the response of they they all say about the same thing, but it's really, you got to find the one that speaks your language. And I feel that same way with, with finding a Duke that can teach you is finding the, or a, a, not even necessarily a Duke, but a, a fighter that can teach you is finding the ones that speak your language and help you can, you can understand. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. And you're correct. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Duke. Um, in our Barney, he doesn't fight that often anymore, but um, his mm -hmm. ex Gregory of Beck, probably the best fighting instructor we have in the Barney. That includes all the other guys you've interviewed. He, is, he has the ability to break down things and teach it to so many people mm -hmm. that I, whenever he's around and if there's a non-belt around, it's like, hey, what do I do? I'm like, that's the guy. You mm -hmm. need to go get some from him right now because who knows when he's going to pop up. And tell him that you're looking for a little bit of instruction. Okay. Because if you tell him that he's looking for instruction rather than just a fight, he'll give you instruction. 
and it'll yeah. be solid. His, uh, he's, he's like a, just a phenomenal teacher, great teacher. Okay, perfect. So. Well, that was probably the quickest five methods that I've ever gone through, sir. <laughs> It's almost like I've done it a few times. <laughs> like at least once or twice, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So, all right. Well, then I will open up. I mean, if you're open to some questions or do oh, you have anything else you'd right. like to add to? Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm sure that uh, if the two or three questions that might show up, I'm, I'm glad to go on for at least a minute. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. That's, <laughs> what, that's what you get. I think that's yeah. like one of the prerequisites to being maybe even a knight or to be a Duke is to learn how to talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, funny story about that. So my third reign, uh, Sage, bless her soul, beautiful woman, love her to death. Yep. Um, one crown. And she, she's like, I, I just, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm not, I'm, I've never done any public speaking before. I'm like, really? She's like, no. I'm like, okay, sure. So this is what we're going to do. She's like, okay, what? I'm like, we're going to get out there. I'm going to say, hi, everybody. I'm going to introduce us. And then I'm not going to speak for the rest of the five months that we're crown prince and princess. It's all going to be you. And she's like, what? Wait, <laughs> what? Bored. <laughs> yeah, like, yes. I did it like, hi, everybody. Like, yeah. you know, welcome. Thank you so much. This is her highness sage. And I stepped back. And that was it for five months. I'm like, but I'm sure she about. learned a lot in said five months. Well, it's kind of funny that you should mention that. Because about two years after our second reign, she actually her and I were obviously super good friends still we're talking about the fact that she had to do a public speaking for her job uh, in front of a couple thousand people oh wow and she's like you know what I really appreciate you uh, you you pulled me out and if it wasn't for what you the path you gave me and the opportunity you gave me to learn how to speak and learn how to use my inner voice I would have never had that opportunity so it's kind of interesting to, to see oh, that wow. come full circle wow that's awesome right. Alrighty, so I have been tasked by Sir Helga, who's also mm -hmm. in this awesome uh, Zoom meeting. She tasked mm -hmm. me to ask all the people on Five Methods, out of your five, which one came to you the easiest? So like which one was the easiest for you to, to learn or accomplish or continue to practice? And which one was the hardest? Um. Learning was the hardest because my brain just it it it's it, it, it's being able to being able to digest what people say and engage the conversation because I will get glaze overlook and mm -hmm. it's not disrespecting it's just that I'm trying to sponge all the information in and mm -hmm. so being able to translate it into something that's going to be workable for me so yeah learn going out there and and it wasn't that I didn't want to learn it was one of those okay how's this going to apply to me? How's that going to work for me? Um, because okay. when I was up and coming as a fighter, it was, we didn't necessarily have the advantage of technology. We, you know, so nowadays you can go ahead and go online and be like, oh, um, yeah, I'm 6'2", and this fighter is 6'2", fighting style similar, I can kind of mimic that. Now it's like, okay, um, you're 6'4", what can you show me? And it's like, yeah. oh, no. So it's like being able to translate their body mechanics and their technique into something that's a little bit different for my body mechanics and my technique. Okay. So that was that was one of the hardest ones to to learn was uh, was that one. Um, one of the scariest ones, a little subcategory. One of the scariest okay. one, and still is one of the scariest ones, mm -hmm. is teaching someone because I'm always afraid I'm going to junk up their um, their particular rhythm, their style, and mm -hmm. it, it's it's I. Uh, you you go out there and you're like, hey, this is something you need to try and this is what you're going to do. I, I really, and I try to, every time I, I start to teach someone, I usually say this, I'm pretty sure I said it to you, there's 101 ways to fight, one's going to work for you. You don't have to listen to what I say, just take it as advice. And I don't want someone to be able to be like, no, Timur said this and this is the way you have to do it. I'm like, no, no, just because I said that doesn't mean it's the absolute way it has to be done. So I always get paranoid that I'm going to, mess up someone else's style, someone else's rhythm by giving them a few pointers or giving them some advice. Or in some cases, bigger man, they don't want to hear me. <laughs> yeah. So. Duke Timothy, I think, said it the, the best so far is when it comes to, to learning from everybody, it's SCA is like a buffet. Take a little bit from everybody. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. yeah. I could relate what you're, what you're talking about. 
Okay, so those are the hardest. Um, the easiest. Um, you know, the, the, I'm not sure if any of them are really easy, per se. Um, I'll say the funnest, not necessarily the easiest, but the one I enjoy the most is learning the tools, learning the tools of the trade, because there are so many out there, and I never want to be a one-hit wonder. I mean, I, it's, it's, we have so many incredible fighting styles and abilities, that we can, things that you can choose from and pick from. Yeah. And being able to go out there, it's, it was, it's always been a blast. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate that I've had some really good instructors that uh, when they kicked my ass, told me why they kicked my ass and we were able to figure something out and work it out and work it out and work it out and work it out mm -hmm. and super patient. So yeah, just going out there and learning new stuff, always something that I always, always enjoyed doing. You know, oh yeah, Good. the tools of the trade. So, so learning was the the hardest one, and learning was the most fun. <laughs> Pretty much, it really, really was. Seriously, the two ones that were the hardest were learning and learning. So, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, I that's true. I mean, if you're not, I think as human beings, we well, I shouldn't say all of us, but a lot of us are drawn to the challenge, and if mm -hmm. we're not challenged by something then typically we don't we're not we don't stay engaged to learn more about it at least for me yeah. I, sh I should say well um, I'm, I'm pretty much the same way too and that's why i said you know give yourself a year because uh, there are some incredibly talented people out there that can pick up something and just go with it i'm not that guy mm -hmm. i'm that guy that i realize that if i pick up a new style spear and shield for example that mm -hmm. i've been playing with for about, about a year now absolutely um, I know that I was going to get my lumps and yeah, you know, coming up, going to fighter practice, <laughs> yes, my lumps at fighter practice was and still is a blast. Um, and then, you know, being able to go to tournaments and get my lumps in tournaments. And I, I, I know, I knew I was going to suck at it for a while and I was okay with that. I was okay with letting go and it was fun. And, you know, it's, I became somewhat adequate with it. Check, check the ego check the ego at the door and earn your lumps. Uh -huh. I think for me, that's uh, me, actually Duke, Sean and I were just talking about this a little bit earlier. And uh, he was talking to me about the compass, the compass drill for the Pell work and like learning footwork uh -huh. and stuff like that. And so I, one of the biggest things that I've been learning as I'm, as I'm learning <laughs> is <laughs> that when you, when you learn something new and you start to implement it, you actually, it actually feels like you suck more. Cause it feels like you're fighting slower. It feels like you're not doing something, you know, you're not doing the correct thing, even though really you are learning to do the correct thing. And then you get your, you get your lumps in that way too. So I think there's a bit, a bit to say about that. So um, the other question that I have been asked to ask on a regular basis is in your experience. And I mean, I don't know exactly how many years you've been fighting, but how, what would you, what would some advice be to newer fighters on, keeping the, their longevity in their career, like preventing um, injuries or, you know, so on and so forth. Woo, okay. Longevity in your career. Let's, uh, all right, let's start with the physicality of it all. Okay. That's the easy one. Physicality of it all is, um, we talked about this earlier, pretty much rule well, number one, cardio, 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 but do something to keep your body going. Um, the older you get, when you're younger, you don't need to stretch out because your body is going to come back, you know? And, oh, my God, I am totally going to be paralyzing. Uh, not paralyzing, but paraphrasing zombie land. But stretching out, you know, you got to stretch limber out. You got to do your cardio. You got to limber up. You got to do everything you can to keep your body in shape. When you're doing your pelvic work, especially when you're new, especially when you're doing your pelvic work, uh, if you're throwing shots, don't throw them full force, full speed. Take some time, you know, three seconds a shot. Just crank it down, slowly deliver the shot slowly recover from the shot, take the time. You don't need to blow out your elbow on a stick of wood. Your friends will let you blow it out on them. <laughs> <laughs> make it worth it. Make it, make it worth it. Yes, <laughs> that's where you learn your muscle memory. You don't need to learn the power generation just yet. Mm -hmm. You know, take your time to uh, have your body adapt to what you're using. And don't be done with your gear. If your gear is failing, replace it. Having your helmets going, replace it. 
-hmm. if you're getting hit and a bruise coming up, you're like, no, I can tough it up. Yeah, you can tough it out now. Five years from now, are you going to be able to tough it out? Ten years from now, are you going to be able to tough it up? Or don't don't do something that's going to have the possibility of long term, you know, health consequences. I mean, we we have a limited shelf life as it is. Those people who have a longer shelf life have found ways to keep their body going, finding things to do to make sure they are physically up to shape. Um, like I said, placing your gear, keeping your own body tuned in check, all these things. And for those people who know me, I am not that physical guy. I'm the little short short dude. Yay. Short yeah. fat dude. Like I forgot the fat part. How could I forget? <laughs> but at the same time, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I can to make sure that, you know, up to the COVID thing, I was doing about anywhere from 12 to 14 hours of cardio a week, not including fighting. So, oh, yeah. yeah, do do what you can. Yeah. So, yeah, I cheat. That's dirty. Uh, so that's it's the physical cheap. part. <laughs> if it's fun, it's fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a blast. Um, the the mental side of it is rule number one. This is my this is like my personal household rule. Rule number one: okay. reality first. Yep. Make sure you're enjoying it. You know what? But make sure that everything else is in check. If you have to go to event or go to school, you are going to resent the fact that you started failing classes and didn't pay as much attention to that. So make sure that your reality is in check before you start playing the game more and more and more and more. Um, because you're going to want to. You're going to want to give in. You're going to want to sell. You're like, oh, I love this. But if you don't have a roof over your house if you have, or over your head, if you don't have a paycheck coming in. Thanks. If you Thanks don't, for that. If you, oh, ah, funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you, have, you know, if you don't have a roof over your house, a brand new baby, all these things happening at once. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, seriously, make sure that reality is coming in. You know, you want to make sure that you're taken care of. Um, and you, you don't want to just be able to speak in baby, the baby. And that's not the baby, but it is a baby. Yep, so, it's one of them. She's, she's on every episode. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, along those lines, when it comes down to the longevity of the game, find those friends that you're going to need you've got the black company you know i had my household before that you know being and it's funny because all of us who've ever were squired to our night and we graduated we still refer to them as our night and we still refer to ourselves as you know our squire brother we never that that's the title we refer to each other because that's our family that's our that's our you know that's our group yep. and you know you want to be able there because it's it's good to have that those kind of people help you and push you along the way it's yeah. harder to do it alone it sucks to do it alone um so yeah those that's the big thing keep yourself physically shaped and keep yourself mentally you know mentally tuned um also for me personally find that next challenge mm -hmm. you know some people are happy as and uh, we've seen this i'm sure if you've seen it but you've seen it where people like they get to the level they want they're like, okay, I'm done. Well, what's next? I don't know. This is this is all I want to go. And that's cool if that's for you. Yeah. For me, it wasn't that. You know, um, yep. people are asking, so what keeps you going? What keeps you going? Honestly, um, my squires and my provosts. Yeah. And it's not even my squires anymore and my provosts anymore. It's the students like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, other people who, being able to teach that, that's what keeps me going now. Watching other people succeed and learn even it's just one or two things that they've picked up for me mm. or things that they shouldn't do that they picked up for me it's, it's been really kind of cool to watch <laughs> absolutely I, can, I mean i i'm not to the level that you are obviously but the the little things Did that you i kick my ass at Australia once once out of 13. <laughs> <laughs> <Good skill. laughs> uh, but i will i digress <laughs> Like watching and how many other people in that line that whole line kicked my ass yeah you did <laughs> once out of 13. <laughs> okay so but I, i'm relating to like taking like you were saying you take this information that i'm getting from all these videos or that i'm learning from when i went out to salt lake to your practice and or the things that i was taught at <clears throat> astrea after the tournaments and so on and so forth i bring it back to even the local Shire and, and we give it back to the fighters here and then you just see the spark in their eyes. They're like, 
wait, what? And then it, you just see that click and you're like, I get it. I, I get it. So mm -hmm. does that make, does that make sense to you at all? Does you know what I mean? Oh, ab oh no, absolutely. That's, that's, that's the cool thing. Um, you know, uh, it, it's watching that, that click, that thing that happened, that, that oh, magic happened in their eyes. That is absolutely awesome. I love that watching it happen. It's just, yep. well, yeah, that's definitely, it definitely makes it, um, it's definitely, that's, that's where some of the payoff comes from, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Duke Sean was in his, in his episode, he was talking about it being that almost being an addiction. So, oh yeah, I can definitely, so here's the cool thing. And I'm going to go on for a, a little bit more on that. I'm sure he probably okay. said it. it. It's an addiction because it's, it's cool to be able to see the contributions you made to someone uh -huh. and then that person give it to someone else. And that whole rolling, the rolling knowledge, it's really, really cool to see. Case in mm -hmm. point, you kind of mentioned it. You know, yeah. you come out to our fighter practice, you go out to Australia, and then you go home. And I know that in your group, there aren't people that can travel as often as you do. You go mm -hmm. home, you teach it, and they're like, oh, this is great. And they, I've seen your fighters, and I've seen the fighters that eat it up with a spoon in the fire. They're like, I'm here because it's Saturday. And you can tell because they're the ones that I'm like, oh, my God, yeah, you can work. And you're kicking my ass, too. <laughs> <laughs> Right on. All right. So uh, are there any questions in the Zoom meeting or in Facebook land? There's about a 10 second delay for Facebook. So they'll probably be hopefully rolling in here shortly. So we're going to open it up to, uh, I'm going to open it up to Vigabrand because I know he has a question. He said it in chat. So I'm going to call him out right nothing. now. He gets nothing. Is it on? Yes, sir. Oh, there we go. Uh, I didn't really have a, whole hell of a lot of question other than he said something about me not wanting to learn from him and I said what the hell <laughs> I, I just like throwing you under the bus you, you should know that by now uh, it, it's fun it's fun to give you shit <laughs> you know because not 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 everyone can be Bart <laughs> <laughs> so work on that you know you, you, you only need one peerage he's got four come on <laughs> uh, I've got almost one you got almost one. Okay. Another another decade or so, maybe. Actually, I lied. I think he I think he only has three. So there yeah. you go. See, three. You only have three. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Are there any uh, other the hell questions out there right now? <laughs> Hopefully, somebody out there. No one's tuning into this one. This one's like the boring one. I I don't know. It's I think it's uh it's all the other crazy videos going on since this pandemic started. It seems like everybody, it blew up right after five methods in the virtual fighter practice group. And now everybody has a show. You could watch SCA 24 hours a day. I bet you, I mean, you take, uh, go ahead. Actually, I was going to say, yeah, you were the first one that I heard of and I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, in fact, I thought it was so cool that I told my, uh, my derby folks about I'm like hey you know what to keep people engaged you guys might want to do what this guy's doing mm -hmm. and i did i was like because this what he's doing this the format he's going with you might just want to go out there and talk to people uh because it's 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 cool it's what what you're what you're doing is it's really been awesome thank you thank you thank you i but like i said it's uh definitely blown up kind of since when i started so um all right well if there's oh there's I knew he'd pop on. Which Lash, go ahead. Oh, Lash, yeah. Hey, how's it going, brother? Lash, brother, how's it going? Long time no see, man. Miss your I know. Look at you, we're in BYU blue. I'm <laughs> 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 killing you. More than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a, I got a, a, a good question for you. Um, well, you should. You've, uh, you, <laughs> you've, uh, now you've reigned how many times? Seven? Um, no, no, I'm not that cool. I'm not, I'm not Bela cool. I'm, I'm only done six. Six? Yeah. All right. Out of all of those, what was the, the hardest thing you've had to do during your reign? Out of all those? Other than come talk to me. <laughs> Other than come talk to you. Um, so it's funny you should mention that. Um, it's not necessarily coming talk to you, but when when someone's being talked about, 
and then they move. And you're like, oh. <laughs> that, that part kind of sucks. That, that part kind of sucks. No, no. So, um, yeah, that, that part, actually, that part really sucks. Um, honestly, the hardest thing to do, the hardest thing I've ever had to do, and it, it's, it's been this way every time, um, is stepping down. And it's not because you're stepping down from the thrones. That part's easy to step down from. It's from stepping down on being able to, uh, of taking six months of putting your all into a job, job, putting your all into a job and being able to, you know, I, I think that most of my ranks have been fairly adequate and it's, it's hard to, you know, let go for something that I was so passionate about for six months. Um, and I'll be honest, after the second one, I didn't, wasn't sure if I'd ever actually do it again. Uh, the first time I won, I didn't think I'd ever actually be able to do it again. Honest to God, I was like, well, that was kind of fortunate. Didn't think that would happen. So, um, so it, it was one of those things where saying goodbye um, to the retinue, to the populace who gave me so much love. Um, and they did. They, they really, I was fortunate. Artemisia is very, a, a very um, endearing kingdom. They, they're just very incredible people. And having to say goodbye to that particular thing as their as their crown, because it is just they are amazing. And then I've been fortunate, I've been fortunate time and time again to have some amazing retinue to that I was able to work with who who said yes, we'll follow you through this crazy craziness that's going to be your reign. And the first one you can understand they didn't know what they were getting into, but the time the sixth one and they they knew the crazy. Um, but being able to let go of them and even though they're still friends, they're still around, knowing that with some of them, if not all of them, they had my confidence, they had my back, they, more importantly, they were willing to tell me when I was wrong or going way off and just being able to step down and walk away from it, 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 it it's, it's really hard to do. Um, cause like I said, you, Artemisia is very, you give them all of your love and they'll give you your love back. And I was fortunate to serve in such a, the benefit of having a small kingdom is that you know people, you know just about everyone in that kingdom. And it, yeah, that was, that was difficult. That was really difficult. I know it sounds really kind of snooty to say, but giving that up. Oh, there's the baby. <laughs> there's the baby. Awesome. Thanks, brother. I, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you doing this too, man. I, yeah. I love oh, no, it's, okay. it's awesome. So I have a question for you, Ash, since you're on right now. How many years now since it has it been since you've taken the Baldrick? Uh, not even one. It'll be July. It'll be July. Oh, so, okay. So for some reason, and you know why, it's always been you. You've always been you've been you've been uh, a member of the show for, to me in my heart for quite a while. So now that this year is just about up, what's been what, what have been some of the bigger changes that people view you and you view the game? Oh, put me on the spot. Oh, heck um, yeah. Yeah, uh, you thought this was about me? I don't think so. Bait <laughs> <laughs> um, and switch. That's my new derby name. <laughs> the, the responsibilities. Uh, the, before, you know, I could go out, go out and have fun, run around, do stuff, go out with my black company friends and just go out and have, you know, do the things and all that. And then uh, I got that little piece of white uh, material and all of a sudden people treated me differently. They're still treating me differently. They're, uh, and then they're watching me. Everybody is watching. And, uh, and then that weight of being, you know, the first one in a long time uh, means even more people are watching. So yeah, and it's, it's a huge weight, it's a huge responsibility. And so I have to make sure that I represent it. And still though, be who I am and not change so that I'm, I'm not going to change. Nor, sh nor should you. But yeah. you got there because of who you are. Not, I mean, you can grow, you can evolve, but that core person, the person that you are always have been, always will be, is just that. So out of curiosity, because I get this question every once in a while, for people going down your path of chivalry, what advice would you give them? To not go down the path, to just do their thing. Don't, don't let it prey on you to, to that you're not 
in your eyes making it or you're not getting accolades or you're not getting these things that you think you should be getting or or don't worry about the path if you're a good person and you apply yourself people see it we're now i can say we we see <laughs> we see everything we see everybody and then if you don't i know i can get a hold of you and you know who they are or you can get a hold of me and say hey what's this guy or you know or we know somebody who's chivalry in that area that'll say hey yeah we know this guy yeah he's pretty good i think guy. you've actually done that to me a few times yep. yeah actually i know for a fact you've done that for me to me for a few times so i know there's the reason why i bring it up because obviously you know how i feel about um i i have absolutely no problems or issues with the with the masters of um master at arms obviously i made one i was a big proponent about you getting yours and so it's it's always it's one of those things where sometimes people forget that that portion of the dream is still there and should be if someone's willing to put in the time regardless of what there is that that part of the dream should not be marginalized and they should to, to realize that it's totally and completely achievable um, so you could do some of the younger ones, so the two youngest ones I know of, um, to actually receive the Baldric. It, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because you became that symbol that I can play my game, and and you know there's that thing where I can become part of the uh, of the order. I can become. Well, never people don't necessarily refer to the order of the show. Really, I can become master, and that's I think that's really really cool. And it's one of the things where. It, it's fortunate that they do have people like you, um, like do. Actually, you have quite a few of the masters in your kingdom um, to look up to, and be like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, Master Fleeg, Master Corwin, yeah, Corwin, fantastic, Corwin. <laughs> <laughs> I love Corwin. I, I have a uber great relationship with Corwin, Corwin, and so um, yeah, well, that no, was, it, that's it, also one of the reasons why my I mean my lady talked about it, and we decided that I was gonna do it was because people need to know it can be done. Now, interesting that you should phrase it that way. You and your lady decide that you should do it. Okay, a couple things to think about. For me personally, it's never a one-on-one -on -one gig. It's never a me, myself, and I. It's me and my consort, because my consort's in at 100%. Uh, they, they, they chose to be with me for this particular portion of the path. You and your wife, obviously, she with, was with you. Um, a portion of past Corey, I'm sure you and your wife, I know for a fact because I've seen her at your fighter practices and she's been super patient with you while you're doing your thing. Mm -hmm. um, with that, with all those things in mind, when it comes down to it, um, being that, that symbol, being that, that, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> that role model for newer fighters who might want to look down that path, not necessarily that of the white belt. What, how's that changed your game? Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad that uh, Corey gave you this opportunity to ask I, you these questions. Well, I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> no, I, I, no I, could chi I could chime in on that one. I mean, and I, yeah, yeah, I please obviously. Do, actually, because this applies to you too. Because I know I, not, I've been giving you crap about stuff, and the truth of the matter is it doesn't really matter because I know which direction you're going. We all know which direction you're going, unless you do something really stupid, which is. Right. Right. not really possible so, you're going to end up in a certain area right right maybe maybe we'll see it depends on how i answer this question i think <laughs> so in all honesty like th this is this is part of the reason why that that question that he just asked is like what i heard you ask uh timmer and you can correct me if i'm wrong is how when it comes to teaching new fighters or motivating new fighters you know how does that make you feel Yes or a no? little bit, a little bit more. It was how do you feel? How do you take on that responsibility? Okay, how do you take on that responsibility? How, how, yeah, because that response, because yep. at that point, yep. and you're you're you you're, you're correct. Because you for your for the black company in your group, you're one of those people that they're going to look up to. You're, you're bringing back knowledge. You're bringing back. So really, both of you guys should answer this one. Yeah. Because I'd love to hear from <laughs> one person who's actually became a master, another person who and. Um, <laughs> Like Lash said, not something that you're necessarily because every time we have this conversation, you're like, ha ha, if it happens, 
Well, the truth of the matter is, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, oh my God, it's a member of the chivalry. Let's take care of that. <laughs> Someone's going to slap you. Whenever, yeah, I whenever. seem to remember a conversation four years ago. So, so Which one? <laughs> we have lots of them. So reeling it back in, reeling it back in, reeling it back in, reeling it back in. Uh, it's, it's a huge responsibility for me specifically, um, not only because of Black Company, but even because of the local Shire. A lot of the newer fighters look up to me because I just went in and, and won this tournament at Estrella, and I'm not trying to brag, so please don't take it that way, but I, I did win. <laughs> and, okay. uh, I, I bragged about you. Yeah, thank you. I bragged you. about you. It's, or like, you know, like uh, getting, helping motivate Vigabrand to get back into the game or all these other, like all these up and coming people in Black Company or even the people that are looking up to me that I don't even know that are looking up to me because of this show. Um, I look at it as, as I have to do everything in my power to present that standard. And if I don't hold myself or if I don't have that standard set for myself, then why should why should they be looking up to me so i for me that's another reason for me to continue to do this show and learn from 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 you from other various other fighters throughout the known world to be the best fighter that i can be to eat from that buffet as duke timothy said and bring it back to the people that i know and and love on a, on a local level plus share that knowledge through this video does that make sense yeah it makes sense so i mean it's it's hard. And just like Lash said, and obviously, you know, I'm not, I'm not a member of chivalry and who knows if it's going to happen. It, but at the same time, like once you, you start down that path, there's a responsibility that you have to live up to. And it's, it's tough at times to, to live up to that standard that we set on ourselves. And I know, you know it, and I know Lash definitely knows it because Lash and I have had this same conversation about that and it's it's pretty difficult to to do but also knowing that you're doing it is pretty phenomenal too so I mean there's there's two sides of it so nice I hope <laughs> no no this is all good this is all good yeah, yeah so, we're, 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 we're documenting everything so it's okay yeah. don't worry like last time we see you we say everything <laughs> oh boy so lash go ahead and come back on please he, he ran away didn't he he's, he's like i'm out i'm gone forget this crap oh man i thought i was out <laughs> no you're not out you're never out you said yes <laughs> <laughs> okay um so uh it's a huge pressure a huge responsibility um, because just like you were talking about teaching somebody that's being so afraid of teaching somebody and them, you know, or, and screwing them up or screwing up their, their process, their learning process, screwing up their, uh, their game. And that's the same being chivalry. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, I, you know, I'm terrified of being that person's peer. You know what I'm talking about. The one that made your game horrible at an event. I and think, no, I think about it for 20 years. I was that years. guy for you once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah, I was. Very true. No, yeah. Not kidding. I was that guy for him once. And, and here we are. I, I, I'll, I'll be very honest. My opinion, we're actual friends. Like, you yeah. know, oh, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been bros for a while, man. Oh, yeah. And I, I, that's, the, that's the fear. Yeah, that's severe. And, um, but I still am going to be the guy that's going to go out there to the overflow and talk to the kids in the pup tents and the, and, you know, in the, the museum replica garb and, and <laughs> scoop them up and, and say, Hey, how's it going? You know, but it's, it is, it's a serious, uh, fear and it's a serious, uh, responsibility because there's a spotlight on me now and um, I got to make sure that I represent the chivalry as best as possible. So yeah, it's tough. Sure. I'll be honest, I think the spotlight on Lash is a lot bigger and a lot more intense than the spotlight will ever be on me. And that's not a fault, you know, it's just because the path you took is so much more rare and so much harder 
Um, and, and there was no, you knew what you were getting into when, when it came up. And there's like a bajillion nights, you know, there's only been two um, masters of defense, uh, not masters, masters, master at arms made to, in this area, in this region in the last like what, five years? That's about exactly. my favorite. That's about my yeah. favorite. Yeah. The last Last ones, the last ones that I knew that were even being considered for it was uh, Dumar and and Lash, and then Lash moved, and he's been gone for Lash has been gone for more than Have you been gone for more than five years now? Oh yeah, and and I had no idea about that until like two. We won't talk about that. We're we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. (sighs) Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) We won't talk about that. Don't didn't mean to drive that bus. (laughs) No, no, it's all right. Uh, But no, there is to do. Who who we made um, during my our my last our last reign, so that was pretty cool. So then, I mean, as somebody that you guys apparently think it's going to that's on this path or consider to be on this path, how do you recommend other people or newer people that are on this path deal with that spotlight? Because that that is a very serious thing, and I I personally feel it since. I've been working closely with a lot of Dukes and stuff like that. It, there is a significant amount of, I'm going to say more attention that I am a lot more, that I'm not adjusted to quite yet. Fight turn so, here. Go ahead, Lash, you go first. Fight, fight a whole bunch of attorneys. Yeah. Fight attorneys because uh, you're in the spotlight when you're an attorney. Sure. And uh, you get the, it's, it's, it gets so, uh, you get so, worked up and you get so uh, nervous and all that other stuff, that prepares you for that. Okay. It prepared me. Yeah. Um, for me, honestly, and here's the thing, and this works full for with using you as an example, and uh, ironically, Bigger Brand, since he came back as well, mm-hmm. is you got to be yourself. Yeah. You, you got to be who you are, you know? Um, Every once in a while, it'll happen. Everyone's seen it. Why do they make that person a laurel or a pelican or a, a member of the chivalry or master? Why, why that? You, you don't want to be that guy. You know, you don't want to be that guy. And you can bullshit the members of the order, but when someone starts becoming a top candidate, I stop asking my brothers and sisters, and I start asking their consorts. Okay. Uh, what do you think of this person? And I asked the consorts for, and I, uh, my consorts, the ladies of the court, the ladies of the populace, mm-hmm. um, the gentlemen of the populace as well. I asked them, the reason why I asked them that is because they're going to get a different view and perspective than what I will get. And the two of them line up, if I, I think this person's awesome, well, this person's awesome because that, great, awesome. If I get the, who's that person? Well, maybe they need to work on their renown a little bit more. Yeah. Or the worst is, I think this person's awesome. This person is a, is a chauvinistic ass monkey, and this is why. Mm. <sighs> Great. Next circle comes up. Hey, this is the information that's, that's been passed on. So, you know, it, it's, it's not just, it's not just the, the order that you need to, that's going to be looking out for you, because at a certain point, you're, you're, you're a great example of this where you, you've created, and I know it was not your intent, but you've created a spotlight and you are now in that. You are the ringmaster of that spotlight. It wasn't your intent to, look at me, you, you didn't go out to start this commit service, mm-hmm. even though you've made a great service to the society by starting this. Um, but people are going to look, and it's not just what you do here and now, it's what the, uh, the, the, like the, the populace themselves the ladies of the court, the gentlemen of the court, the populists in general, yeah. they're the ones that after, after a certain point, I start asking people, what do you think of person X, Y, Z? And I want to hear their opinion on it. I want to hear why they hear something. Cause I know for a fact, I'm not going to see everything, yeah. but I also know for a fact I can find information out. Right. Right. That makes sense. Okay. So just be you and be you throughout the whole course yeah. and then be you and honestly if you if, um 
Oh, here we go. Here, here it is. And, and today's <laughs> climate. And today's climate. If you're you, and you are, you know, you're great. You and I are buddies. We're friends or stuff like that. Yep. But, you know, let's say you're making some homophobic comments, but I don't ever hear of them because you don't hear, tell them to me or directly to me. If mm -hmm. I hear them three stages down, someone eventually is going to bubble that information up. And then we're going to have to be like, hey, this is not the dude we want representing us. Right. And why? Especially you know, in today's it's, society it's, with today's everything climate, that's going yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. Society, it is a, it's, it's, it's sad that it's taken us so long as a society in general, not just our part of the dream, but society in general, to get to this point. Um, but it's stuff like that that's no longer, you know, it, it, it's no longer tolerable. And we got to be able to be on guard with it. So when you comment stuff, you might be able to bamboozle whatever order you're in. But it's hard to bamboozle the whole populace because we yeah. will, they will tell on you. And mm -hmm. at the same notice, they'll also tell the cool stuff. They yeah. will definitely tell the cool stuff. Like I found out about your victory. Not only yeah. did I find out about your victory down in Australia, but the cool thing about it was how clean you went in to fight it. Yeah. That's, that's what I got. It wasn't just that you went in there and kicked ass. It's that you went in there and your fights were clean. They were solid. They were definite. Yeah. That, that might have mattered more to me than you're just winning. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So bringing a full circle with a, this whole topic that we've had with like, I mean, becoming a member of chivalry and going down that path, mm -hmm. how can you relate that all back to fighting? What do you mean? So, I mean, it just, <clears throat> when it comes to fighting and uh, walking the path and being honorable and all that, that kind of stuff, how does, how do the, how does walking the path and fighting correlate to one another? For our order, that that pretty much oh my god, I can't believe I'm about to say this. That pretty much is the path. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is it's so when it comes down to fighting the way our sport is set up, it's easy enough to cheat. Sure. Oh, I didn't feel that. I didn't get that shot. You know, a a a person who you want there is and along those lines that you're going to learn if you are cheating and winning tournaments you are not going to learn you're not going to grow and you're not going to be viewed as chivalrous either yeah if you put in the time you take your lumps you 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 do something you're like okay what did i do wrong you go back you watch footage you you have your friends say hey this is why this happened. You have that friend that's over there that, you know, it's a little bit more of a seasoned fighter. Mm -hmm. um, hey, what'd you see? What, how did I lose that one? You know what? That stuff, being that honest, being clean, that's how you're going to get that positive renown. And it's not the, I'm going to win this fight because I'm super fast, super quick. It's the, well, how well did you take those losses? How did you take those wins? Did you yeah. take those wins very graciously? And they're like, hey, you know what? That's, that's very cool. Thank you so much. You, you fought really, really well. Uh, are you going to laugh and be like, oh, my God, that was such a great fight. I love it. Or are you going to throw your helmet down in tantrum and walk off the field for the yeah. world to see? Right. You know, the, 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 the fighting path and our path is kind of almost laid arm in arm, in my opinion, okay. for, those, for those specific reasons. You know, it's the way you conduct yourself on the field should be the same way you conduct yourself off the field mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. It hurts a little bit when I have, and I have, I have those friends and we've had this painful conversation. Um, when it's like, you know what, man, you're incredibly awesome, but you've got to change your, your harness because your harness is taking way too much abuse. Yeah. <laughs> right. So in terms of honesty, there was a questionable shot in that tournament at Estrella. Just, I'm sure you were aware of it as well. But we talked about it I, just for the sake of you giving me a really sincere compliment and my ego saying, hey, that was a nice compliment. And then I feel like I sh after you just said that, I should probably bring that up and say there was a shot in question. And the fighter and I had talked about it during the fight. And then we talked to, 
I personally wanted to talk to him again after the fight because, yeah, for those reasons exactly that you just said, because I wanted to make sure without a shadow of a doubt that he was also confident that the shot that was thrown was, was not good. And I didn't want to go out there and, you know, yeah. Um, it's, it's funny that you should mention that because in my history of fighting, there are in everything, all of them, you know, crowns, fighter practices, all of it. There are two attorneys. I can't remember the attorneys, but I remember the fights and I remember the fighters that and one was, um, you know, back in the day, way, way back or back before, you know, when I thought was, or even one, one of them was red. I remember not taking a shot and I regretted it. And I still regret it because I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. And I'm like, you know what? I wear that shame still because inside it's like, man, I could have done better. And exactly. maybe part, part of that, and it is, it's that thing that we're human and we know it. You know, sometimes yep. the shot will come in and be not good. Um, I mentioned Greg Urbeck earlier. We, her, him and I were in a tournament not mm -hmm. too long ago. Um, and we, it, was, it, was a, it was a tough fight. You know, we were in the finals of the tournament. And um, there was some comp side conversation had and we stopped because neither one of us were landing blows. And Greg comes over and walks over to me and is like, everything I've thrown at you, you've blocked. Nothing felt good on my side. Is there anything I could have done better? I'm like, no, I'm throwing all the stuff to you and you're hitting them and that you're, you're blocking it. So it's all good. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the way our sport goes, however, there's that third wall, yeah. um, the, the populace, and they got to see what's happening. Um, when the most recent crown that I was in with Damon, his majesty, you know, I hit him with a shot that was questionable, and mm -hmm. I called it back because it was just too high on his forehead, and yeah. that wasn't good enough for me. And Kinda that, 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 yeah, it was just like, whoop, it was right nice there. Stuff, and I'm like, stuff. yeah. No, no good. Get up, damn it. <laughs> and you won't and, let me have that one again. <laughs> and I mean that that says that says more about you because I mean, in a lot of different aspects, you yourself could have said, "Hey, no, that was good," but you knew that you could you could you held you hold yourself to a higher standard and know that that shot could have been more clean. It could have, yeah, it definitely could be. Um, Adult Swim, which if you had a chance to, mm -hmm. um, you should go. Um, I do believe it was His Majesty Atlantia, whose name totally baffles my mind right now. Fun guy. We're sitting there fighting, and it was Sunday morning, so Sunday practice, Sunday's practice isn't is a little bit more sparse than Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting there fighting, and he hits me with something. Mm -hmm. Not a lot on it, but it was super clean. It was like clean as clean gets. Yeah. And I I I so I'm like, great, great shot. Let's let's start over again. And he stops at me. He's like. Oh, why'd you, why'd you, uh, why'd you take that? There wasn't a lot of power. I'm like, yeah, but I did nothing. I did this, this is a practice and I did nothing to block it. I left my chicken wing arm out there. You tagged it. Mm -hmm. I should have moved it. I should have done something. And he's like, huh, okay. A few passes down the road. I throw in a mediocre shot at best and same thing. And he's like, good. And he's like, I'm like, and ironically, the exact conversation, like, are you sure not a lot of juice? And he's like, that's a good point. We need to practice to be cleaner. And it wasn't that he wasn't clean. It's was just that, you know, it's, it's why I refer to as the fighter practice shot. Yeah. Where fighter practice, you want to be a definitive yes or definitive no. If something comes in a little bit, eh, talk about it, catalog it, and be like, okay, on my side, I need to work on a better defense. On your side, you need to generate more power or yep. have a better target or whatever it is. There's place to be able to do that at fighter practice. That was where it is. So if there are, where it was one adequate dude, a, a, a crown, a crown, both of us having this very casual conversation about how we can both improve each other's game. And it, the cool thing was, it wasn't a, well, this is what I got. It was very casual. It was very Good. super casual. And I love that. Perfect. 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 Well said. I have a couple questions from Facebook land. Are you ready for those? Fire away. All right. Uh, Warwick asks, what were your most memorable fights? How do you learn to use unusual weapon combos? Do you cop much, do you catch much flack for using unusual weapons or do you just kick their ass? It's kind of a, a three um, for one deal. Wow. That's all, all of them. So Warwick, love you, by the way. Um, 
most memorable fight? Um, so, <laughs> okay, the, the most memorable fight, when, um, when Artemis was first, um, first came kingdom, we did our crown tournaments at the time standard, what was then standard, the best two out of three double women, uh, not two out of three, but just standard double elimination. So when I first became service to Sean, um, Crown Journey, that's, that's where you go to see where you're really at. You know, that's, that's, that's where you go to kind of figure out what you need to work on, you get your lumps, come back. And so Sean was on the throne. And so it was, it was our fifth crown. It was our fourth, fifth crown. Fifth, fifth, fifth. Yeah, it was our um, fifth crown. Sean was on it was the throne. A, it was the fourth. Uh, yeah, I was the fourth king, so it was the fifth crown. Oh, fifth crown, yeah. So, look, Sean, we can count. Yay. So, Sean is on the throne, and Sean knows exactly what I'm talking about because it's funny as shit. So, I'm sitting there fighting this guy, and uh, all, his name's Garrett. Uh, he's the, the last prince of our, of our king, uh, of our principality for Artemisia. And awesome guy, fun guy, lefty, great, powerful, fast, good personality, just a fun fight. And we're sitting there fighting, and something happened. Some weird, you know, I rolled a 20, and I hit his leg. Bang. He went down. And I was sitting there like, oh, this is, Sean and I never trained for this. What, what do I do next? Okay, well, I'll, 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 and I did the robot. Yeah, I will kill now. I will kill now. Somehow or another, I got the dice. Hey, I rolled another 20, and I, I throw this shot. I don't even know what it is, but I throw this shot. And then Gareth does this. I'm like, and I literally stop, pause, look at Gareth, look up at Sean, look at Gareth, and Sean, thank you, Sean, <laughs> you salute him and walk away. <laughs> oh, shit, we didn't talk about what to do for my victories. I salute you and I walk away. And so that was, that was one of my more memorable fights I can remember because it was just so unexpected. It was an unexpected victory. And I, I you know, it was never, because at that time, I'd go out there and I'd fight some of the great knights I could be, and be done in two. That was my gig. I'd go out there, fight the best two knights that weren't in my region, be done in two. Oh, I managed to go to three this time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah really we, we, hadn't, we hadn't covered success up to that point. So uh, in, in there Paris, was no. You know. <laughs> there was no success. I mean, you know, something you don't know that you've never learned. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, I'm sure he was more surprised than anybody. But uh, you know, I, I I knew there was going to be a time when when certainly there was some success in the future. Uh, so mm -hmm. I figured we'd deal with that when it comes. Yeah, but we didn't expect it then. I didn't. Yeah. You didn't. So it was it was a uh, it was kind of funny. Actually, it was super funny. Um, so that was one of my more memorable. I I I am positive I have a load of memorable fights on girls said that was this and that was that but that for me that was one more that was one of those fights that kind of stick you're like oh yeah i remember that and that was so funny um mm -hmm. a, another memorable one that i really enjoy and i don't know what it is about this particular fighter but when he and i fight um it's it's almost like uh, and, and you'll and sean knows what i'm going to talk about since i mentioned this it's mm -hmm. like Little yappy dog, me fighting good old grizzly. I can't say grizzly because it's not true, but but full on dog. You know the, the mm -hmm. wolf. So it's like, hey, come on, come on, let's let's fight a little bit, let's fight a little bit. And so, and whenever me and this particular fighter fight, it's never really our primary weapon style. We're like, what do you want to fight? What do you want to fight? I'll match you. I'll match you. How about we do Florentine or great sword or bastard sword, something a little more even ground. And it's always good times because somehow or another, one, he always gives me time, which I appreciate. And two, uh, the, 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 the I'm, your great, I'm your grandfather gets, doesn't really get brought up. Um, and so it's really cool. So whenever I get a chance to, to um, tangle with Brian, dance mm -hmm. with Brian, Brian Tarragon, it's, it's just fun humor. Uh, fun humor. Sean's seen it a few times. And yeah, it's just good, good times. But not because we all take it seriously. But because we just have fun, it's just like, let's just go with this. And so those are some of the, other, that's another one that's always been lots of fun. Um, weapon style, which, which question do you say about the weapon style? Uh, he asked, how did you, how do you learn to use unusual weapon combos? Um, 
by taking a beating. <laughs> no, um, honestly, it's um, it is a lot of a lot of okay. This works. How can I make it better? This works. How do I make this better? And it's it's a lot of time with breaking it down. Now, um, you know, it, it's fortunate that I have in my backyard. I have some phenomenal fighters who will help me break it down and be like, okay, you tag me. How how'd you do this? You tag me. How'd you do that? You know, Sean and I have broken down the spear stuff not because of Sean's a spear and sword guy or Madu guy, but Sean's a fighter, and so we've broken it down. Um, Lachlan's another example that I've, I, I owe a, a significant victory to because he and I um, were working through an offside headshot with when, when, when most people use two weapons, if they're going to deliver anything to the offside head, it's going to come from this weapon. Well, what if we use this to redirect the blow so it clears their sword out of the way and you mm -hmm. can clear it? And, and Lachlan and I just worked it out, worked it out. So a lot of it is just patience and trying to find out once again goes back to that um the, the top five know your weapon style mm -hmm. being able to take the time to dig in and figure out your weapon style and figure out how to make it better and and, and a lot of that is by trial and error it's not just a okay this is it and it's not for me it's not good enough that it works for me i won't be able to teach someone else how to do it because it works for me great we've 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 accommodated my body size, my shape, my speed. But if I can get it, if I can actually teach it, it then it stops becoming a style and then becomes a technique. Got it. And, and as far as people making fun of it, uh, as, as most people know, my primary weapon style is, uh, is spear and sword, um, a short spear and sword. Uh, mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that actually was a long evolution uh, fighting. So my first weapon uh, of choice was um, shield, uh, heater, heater shield, important note there, and um, and sword, and I loved it. You know, I had an incredible instructor. Um, did I say that out loud? Anyway, uh, so I had it, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm I'm doing okay. I'm doing adequate with this. Oh, oh, that oval. That oval is a little bit more my persona. Let's try that oval. Okay, that oval is really really cool. I'm I'm getting some some okay growth with this. Um, oh, hey, that mod do thing, that's kind of like an oval on its smaller shield. Let's, let's try that. Let's try the mod do thing. Okay. And then there's this, uh, there's this guy in our, in our barony. Sir Michael the Lucky, old, old knight, like, hammer. But you should do is you should just, um, you should not, you should just try to fight with a gauntlet. That way you can change your range. My God. Yeah. Why not? Let's try that. And um, yeah, my hand got beat up because you know I'm used to punch blocking. <laughs> that stopped fast. <laughs> I bet it, it really did. Fast. I bet it did. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that sucks. Oh, I'm <laughs> cry now. <laughs> but and, and so really for me it was an evolution. And the reason why the evolution started was mm -hmm. well, I'm I'm okay here. What can I do to challenge myself? Okay. It wasn't a this is an easy weapon style. I was like, well this. So I know the heater, and I know the heater's great. How about this oval? It's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a, it's, it's not a full restart, but it is. Oh, Madu, center held, defense. Now my defense has gone down, and the offense change off isn't that great. You don't get a huge benefit by having two little stabbing tips. Um, and then going to the single spear, now your defense is almost totally gone, and your offense is there, but it's a matter of a, a attack of opportunity rather than a primary for me. And so for me, it was that, it was that challenge. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to do something a little bit different. And yeah, people, people give me a lot of, no, I can't say people give me a lot of guff. It's interesting to hear comments like, oh, it's that weapon style. And then I'll fight them. They're like, huh, that's, you're actually really good with it. I'm like, well, you know, there are certain, there are a lot of other people, Bayless from the Outlands. Yep. Um, Actually, at Jackson Outlands, well, there's several really great people that uh, that fight, you know, spear or Madu and sword. It's just that you, you it's a matter of you, you figuring out that there's an actual group out there, and mm -hmm. so it's really interesting because, like, work said, do I just kick your ass? It's not like I go out there, like, I'm gonna go prove that I can. It's like, well, let's go fight, and you're okay with me fighting with this, and 
And then the, you know, them going, oh, that's that's legitimate fighting style. I'm like, well, and paraphrasing my night, maybe it's not the weapon style, maybe it's the fighter. <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's something to be said about that. You you yeah. make the weapon style, the weapon style doesn't make you, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, moving right along, Chad Rapier asks or says and asks there is really no replacement for time in this game. Stick time is stick time. Practice time is practice time. Time at the Pell is time at the Pell. So how can someone that can never get as many years, much less hours in the game, ever hope to catch up with the skills slash abilities of someone who has decades in the game? Because you have time on your side. We don't. All right, Fair. so it, here's the thing. Here's the thing with Pell work, and everyone's different. Everyone's going to be able to do it a little bit different, but in a little bit of different time. Mm -hmm. um, for me and Pell work, I, I, I try to advocate at least five days a week if you can do it. And, and you don't have to do a lot, you know, maybe 15 minutes, mm -hmm. five days a week. Um, I don't, I'm not, I, I, I have a fairly busy life. I don't have time to dedicate a lot of time to Pell work, but um, until the COVID-19, <laughs> but, um, but it is, it is that, that thing where, you know, you take what you can when you can. Um, and the reason why I try to do five, you know, whenever you set expectations of Pell work, be realistic of your time. And the reason why I say be realistic of your time is because if you miss it, they're like, oh man, I missed today. I don't do it every day. Well, you're going to start beating yourself up. Mm. Good and bad. It's good because you're holding, you're holding yourself accountable. It's bad because psychologically you're now telling yourself you failed. You stopped. Mm -hmm. You didn't do it. you got to restart. So really try to be realistic about the time that you can. Um, it, it's funny that he should mention that because there was a time when um, in our barony, when I started fighting, there were three phenomenal fighters that I never thought I'd ever be able to get close to touching, you know, and, and these two yep. guys were, they were, it. they were the epitome. They were the, the bomb. Uh, mm -hmm. They still are, in my opinion, you know, and so I put in the time I could and fighting, I, I would try to fight at least once a week at a fighter practice. And then I try to find, find an event locally, try to once a month. And by locally, I, I mean within a 200 mile range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's hard to, and try to, don't try to catch up to where we're at. Try to progress you to where you want to be. Does Good answer. Sense? Yeah. It makes sense to me. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, it, it isn't, it isn't, doesn't matter where I'm at. If, if you want to use me or Sean, or you know Brian or Greg or these other knights as your stepping stone. Yep. I did, but that's not you. And, and there was a time when I was like, I want to be where you're at, and then I realized I need to be happy where I'm at. And if exactly. I want to progress on, I'll try to put in more time. And, and that's that's the thing. You you don't don't try to be where we're at. Try to be where you want to be. Mm. And and there there's always going to be an. A, you have a, you may or may not have access to tools that are people. Yeah. You guys, Vernon, yeah. you talk. Right. You yeah. guys are three hours away from anyone. You put in the time, and even if someone in your household in the black company can't mm -hmm. travel, you're bringing the knowledge back. Yep. So, yep. That question. <laughs> that was that was that was a good answer. So great answer, and I I really uh, was touched by the what you you said about uh, instead of aspiring. I mean. It's okay to have like uh, people that you aspire to be like or people that you look up to, but at the same time, don't compare yourself to them, like you said, because you you live on a different or you're on, you're on a different path for yourself. Like the way you fight is totally different than the way I fight, and if I'm constantly mm -hmm. comparing myself to the way you fight, I'm always going to be disappointed because it's not like yeah. you. But I need to focus more on how I fight. In a way, and, I mean. And here's well another thing too. Think about. I've had far more losses than crowns than I ever had victories. Far more. Tons more. <laughs> victories, I've only had six. Compare that to the number of crowns I've entered 
and the number ones I've lost. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's a ton. <laughs> it's like, that's, I lost a lot. <laughs> Which is also probably why you've learned so much about, I mean, about who you are and, and how you've progressed as a fighter is by losing all those times. You you probably took something from each crown tournament and said, okay, well, I lost because of this. Now I need to work on this. And then you took that back to the next crown. And if you didn't win, then you learned something new. I mean, you just, you kept going down the path of knowledge or learning, I'm assuming. Absolutely. There is, it, it's harder to learn from victories than it does than when you do from losses. There was a, I kid you not, there was a roller team, uh, roller derby team named Gotham. They're based out of New York. They went, I think it was four years, four years undefeated. That includes the world champs, four years undefeated. Someone asked their coach once, how do you guys do that? And he's like, he said, we treat our victories the way you treat your losses. In other words, when they, when they get done with the tournament, win, lose, whatever, one, obviously, they go back and they scrutinize their performance over and over again to try to get it better. It wasn't good enough that they won. They want to make sure what they did, where, where, where are the improvements happening? Wow. Okay. Wow. So, I mean, you can learn both from winning and losing. So, yeah. You just, good. It's, it's a lot harder. Honestly, it's harder So to do it from winning. Anyway, continue on. I think just I continue on learning from winning, absolutely, because, I mean, your ego comes into play and be like, I won that fight. <laughs> yeah. What am I supposed to, to, to learn from that fight? But Duke, Duke Sean, again, <laughs> he said it best to, or what uh, resonated with me the most was um, re- redefining your victory conditions of like, did, did you actually win that fight or did you just get lucky? I mean, he says it a little bit differently, but that's the way that I, that I interpreted it. And so did you really I, win it? I interpreted it the same way too. Yeah, yeah. seriously. So, uh, and it is, it is, it's a good, it, it's one of those things where it's like, did you win that or did your opponent slip up? Did your opponent yep. fail? Yep. There, 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 there is a difference between the two, um, you know, and, and, and it's important to realize that. It's important to realize, oh, I won versus, oh, I, well, shit. <laughs> I, I, I yep. did win, but, you know, they, they, they went to block a shot and get hung up on their shield. Yep. We've all done that. <laughs> Yep. Um, you know, it's just, it's just that, that thing where, mm-hmm. and so you, you take it down and you do, you, I learned so much from my losses. So, so much. Um, I, what I've learned most from my victories is the illusion of humility. Sure. <laughs> sure. So, <laughs> but, right. um, no, but seriously, it's, it's like, um, with losses, it's easy to be like, okay, I broke this down. I, I, this is what I did wrong. This is what I did wrong. With the victories, it's like I had a great day today, and I'm going to run high from the win of today for a while. Sure. And then you're like, well, crap, two weeks down the road, what what did I do? I, I go back to find the footage. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, to, to learn from your winnings, you really have to, I mean, completely and utterly check your ego at the door to to look at yourself in a in a I mean, not, I don't want to say losing mindset, but a losing mindset to like like that team you were talking about like they had to scrutinize themselves even though they were winning there's still mistakes mm-hmm. happening even though you won and you can find those if you, yeah. if you keep that ego in check or have somebody else look at your your video footage for you and be like hey this is what i saw this is what you could be doing better even though you won so work on this yeah. now it's fortunate i got that guy i have that yeah. guy in my world yeah yeah <laughs> I, well, that was okay. <laughs> but I mean, even in in today's day and age, though, like we all have that guy. We all have multiple guys and ladies out mm-hmm. there that I I share my video footage to everybody because I want to hear what ev- somebody what you might see might be different from what say Sir Helga sees, and I I go to her a lot mm-hmm. too just so I can see what see the two different spectrums of of what people see. So take advantage of that, guys, is what the The message here is, and moving forward, the last question comes from Prince Timothy uh, from Merides. I'm sorry if I destroyed that pronunciation. Um, (laughs) That one. He says, how can you help, okay, plateaus, how can you help your your associates overcome them? All right, so with plateaus, we have, and I say we, 
because it's kind of a family family formula. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you hit a, for us when we hit a plateau, and we always do, we this doesn't work for everyone. Caveat, mm -hmm. but we find a way to actually remove ourselves from what we know and throw ourselves into something that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, congratulations! You hit your plateau. You've been hitting your plateau for a while. You know what? You're going to fight the rest of the summer and the first half of the fall left-handed. You have all the knowledge, and now you got it, you're going to be forced to break down that fight in a different way, in a different aspect. And so it literally removes you from your familiarity and to something totally different. Oh, you're going to fight great sword. You're going to fight quarantine. So that violent pull out of where you're at. And I say violent because it sucks when you go like, oh, I'm gonna throw the flat snap and your, your shield's like, wait, that's not right. <laughs> and so for us, I say us because it's a family formula, we really try to pull them out of what they're familiar with for, and it's not just two or three weeks, it's like, hey, you are, when I hit, um, my, when I hit my last time, I can't say the last time, but when I was Sean Squire and I hit a plateau, he's like, okay, you are going to fight from um, crown to crown, left-handed. Go. Wow. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and it, it sucks. But yeah. the cool thing is, is that my knowledge was there. My knowledge was there. My ability to fight was there. My control of my left half was not there. <laughs> so it forced me to slow down, reset, rethink my approach to every fight. Because I can't just go in, okay, I'm going to go in and throw this fight. It's like, okay, I'm here. I know I can throw this shot. How do I get the target open? How, instead of it just being an instantaneous thing, mm -hmm. it forced me to think about it. It forced me to slow down because I was no longer in my comfort zone. And so for, for us, it was that, that removal of a familiarity and then put into something that is just enough different. Okay, left hand, left hand was way different to yeah. make you go, oh, okay, this is this is real. This is what we're gonna do. And honestly, finding the offhand thing until you're part of our household is my household pretty much straightforward. The reason why I throw my caveat there in my household because it seems to be an ongoing thing where most of my squires and provosts get their arms jacked up for some mundane reason, and they end up fighting left-handed, like Thorvald, Richard. Um, Jermaine and now Veggie Brand, all of these guys. Like, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, going back to what is kind of success with with that is, is for us, it is the removal of the familiarity and forcing yourself to think about it. So, and for me and for most of the family, it's actually I can say with confidence because of the record with my squire brothers and their squires. For for us, it worked. It doesn't work for everyone, but for us, it worked. And it was it was neat, and it was frustrating, and it pissed me off. It really did. I remember coming halfway through um, that that six month time frame, like, oh man, coronation's coming up. Sean, do I have to fight in Queen's Champion with this? Yes. Bastard. <laughs> and yeah. I, I totally got my ass handed to me. So, um, but the thing is, it was it was good. It, it forced the removal of the familiarity, forced mm -hmm. me to think, forced me to break down the fight in a different aspect. And then when I did switch back, it was really, it was, it, it made me comfortable and happy to be back. <laughs> okay. And it kind of probably changed up, like you were saying about your mindset of being, uh, the, the knowledge was there, but they're like, I'm going to say like the mind was, but the body was not. And so you had to like re oh, the body was so not. learn. So yeah, like you said, you had to relearn how to make people open up. So yeah, because the, the same the same openings just weren't happening. Got it. Sorry about that. I think I was having uh sorry about I was having some technical difficulties. It sounded like I was chopping up a little bit on the microphone. Do I sound better now? You sound so much better now. Oh, say, thank say, God. Do I sound better now? Oh mm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not Duke. Dukanza by any means, but <laughs> but who is right, <laughs> right? So, alrighty. So I think that's uh, that's the end of the questions, and I think we're gonna 
bring it in and rein this episode to a close because we're at an hour and a half and Lash still has to be reigning champion of two hours of nonstop talking. Lash so, was two Lash, hours? I'm not Lash surprised. Was two, I'm, Lash I'm, was I'm absolutely not surprised because right? uh, actually I am surprised. I thought Sean would take him. But <laughs> it was close. It was a close one. Sean, Sean, yeah. we did, and we broke it up into two episodes on the YouTube. But uh, I mm-hmm. looked at the the two time counts, and Lash hasn't beat. Lash hasn't beat. So, last question. Lastly, is there any advice that you could give to maybe somebody that's thinking about fighting or considering jumping into the game that's not quite sure what to do? Yeah, this is something that's on. Okay, so this is this is a broad perspective. That's that's a, that's a that's a not simple question. So yeah. when you're if you're looking at coming back, coming to the game, if you're looking at getting started, um, first you do not have to break your budget on a suit. Right. My pet peeve with most fighters who've been around for a while is it's cool that you have a cool suit, but mm-hmm. Don't don't brag about the fact that you spent two thousand dollars on your helmet to a college kid that you know eats ramen five days out of the week. Because that was me. I was that ramen guy. <laughs> so what, when you when you make your suit, when you make your first suit, don't make it your dream suit. You can if you have the absolute tools and the money and the time and the time for it. I sure. did not. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, take your time to build a suit that you're going to be comfortable in, that you can fight in. Find find people to help you with that. I remember. Um, there's a gentleman down in Aerosite. He's no longer with us. He's passed. As the answer gone, he helped me build my first suit. And that suit was, one, I still have it and fight in it. Two, made out of acquired um, buckets. Oh, wow. <laughs> like finer buckets. Like, mm-hmm. seriously, acquired planet. Um, um, yeah. And, um, and it was my first one going into. Still fighting it to this day. It's, it's actually kind of turned into my travel suit. It's just a life. Um, but you know, work, work on your, work on your budget. Don't, don't worry about having to, to, you know, be the most expensive, the coolest thing out there. The nice thing about your second suit is your first suit will tell you, okay, this is good. This is bad. This is something I can live with. This is something I should not live with out. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. So making those adjustments, not having to, um, budget the bank, um, uh, Lady Ursa, a dunker squire, she taught a class on building a suit of armor, and she's got her stuff down to science where, with the exception of the helmet, she can get someone from neck to kneecaps done in two days' time. So if you have a full weekend, a full weekend, it's not like eight hours on one Saturday, eight hours another Sunday, Saturday, and get the whole thing t- uh, hammered out for less than 100 bucks, including shield. Wow. Yeah, I, I, and it, it's, 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 it's not the prettiest. It's plastic, it's leather, it's rivets, it's a tabard. Tabards go a long way <laughs> to make things yeah, look pretty. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. She, and it's a simple pattern. She's um, outfitted four different people in that pattern as their first suit. Mm-hmm. Great, and the nice thing about it is that it's simple to modify. Oh, right. um, this leg's a little tight. Let's, let's trim it. Let's like, hit the heat, hit the heat gun, spread it out a little bit more. So that's that'd be one. It's like one watch your watch your watch your budget so you don't have to break the bank to actually enjoy this game. Um, two, this one you're gonna laugh at. Yeah. Um, when you start hanging out with people, learning people how to fight, don't let their politics become your politics. Uh, I think that's one of the problems I have with the chivalry is that too often they'll run in and scoop someone up, and they'll like. Brandish them. One of the cool things I liked about Sean, and this is where the, the humor is going to come, not necessarily that mm-hmm. one, but is that when um, when he took me in as his man at arms, we had a conversation about politics. And <laughs> oh, I can't say this is a straight face anymore. My exact words for him, for a rear, young Timmer, was, I don't want anything to do with politics. Um, <laughs> but but don't let so when you when you start a game, don't let someone else's politics affect how you play the game. Because sure. you never know when you're gonna miss out. Like example, Lash. If I would let my personal feelings from our first real introduction stick with me, we would never have had that friendship. And let's say he and I would have diverged down that path, so not not friendship, 
anyone that he lent might not have ended up meeting me as a friend and vice versa. So yeah. try not to let those, your, your person, whoever you're working with, let their politics be their politics. You play you. You know what? Just, just have some fun. Rule number eight. Rule number one, reality first. Rule number four, have fun. You know, this, this is just a game. It, it's just a game. Enjoy it. Enjoy it for what it is. Um, don't beat yourself up if you don't think you're doing as well. Find someone to help you out. If you feel like you're getting frustrated, find someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that someone's going to be your significant other. It might not be always, but whoever that person is, because they're going to be in it with you from the bitter to the sweet. Wow. <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah, that's it. Boom. <laughs> well said, sir. Well said. All righty, guys. Thank you all for tuning in uh, for tonight's episode. I got a lot out of it. As you could tell, we kind of went off on a tangent, but we brought it back in, which is good. It was a good learning for me, especially. And I, this is what this show is about is me and why I started it. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to hold yeah. it real close. Um, thank you. Go ahead. You're welcome. I'll see you Saturday. Yes, you will. Are you guys having a practice Saturday? The yes. Is good. Yes. Um, right. Let's we'll catch up after the show. So I'm okay. going to cut the live feed guys. And again, thank you all for tuning in and watching. Uh, make sure to get on other avenues. Uh, Aria, what's your, what's that, the, the TV guide channel that you guys have? Uh, known World TV Guide or <laughs> something like that. I don't remember, but there's a lot of shows out there, guys. Make sure you turn in, tune into all of them to the best of your abilities. I know um, Sean, Duke Sean has been doing a fighter analysis show um, he specifically told me to watch it, so I'm going to be watching it soon. Um, there's all kinds of other stuff at the Virtual Fighter Practices for Vesper. It's also her birthday today, or it was either today or yesterday, so make sure you stop and say happy birthday to her because she's also been a phenomenal part of spreading the SCA love in the known world in our pandemic time. And apparently we need to talk to Ursa about getting new fighters in armor for less than 100 bucks because that's freaking cool. So... Hmm. Um, Lastly, but not least, uh, we will be getting more and more episodes for the next couple of weeks because I'm going to be off for a little while due to my baby being born. So hopefully I'll get some more episodes for five methods in. Um, but other than that, guys, thanks for tuning in and we will see you on the next episode. All right, we are.